I'm Bob the Canadian. Welcome to this English lesson about communication. We're going to talk about a wide variety of things this morning when it comes to communication. So, I went way back to start this lesson and I went to the word marathon. So, the marathon is uh, an event at the Olympic Games where people run a little over 26 miles. Um I'm not sure what that is in kilometers but the marathon is a very long uh race. It's a long distance race. Um and the history of the marathon is that it was a run that someone named Philippides. Now, I apologize to Athanasios uh if I say this wrong. Um but he ran from the battle of Marathon to Athens to report that they had won the battle. Hopefully, I have my history correct but that is one example of how messages used to be delivered. How communication used to happen. Um if you wanted to send a message to someone far away, you literally had to go and give the message to them or send another person. So, anyways, I have never run a marathon. Um I find the marathon intimidating. When something's intimidating, it means that you're just scared to even try it. Um I have in my life run in short races like five kilometer races but I don't think I could ever run a marathon. Um after that, people used carrier pigeons for a little while. So, you would put your message on the leg of the bird of the pigeon and the pigeon would fly somewhere and deliver that message. So, just a couple older methods. Um there was also when people wanted to communicate from one ship to another, they developed a system where they could use flags. I believe it's called semaphore and they would use flags to communicate. I think this is the letter B but I'm not 100% sure. Um but anyways, just a few of the older ways and then eventually, we invented mail. Um so, mail is something that has been quite common for a very long time on this planet. Um I remember when I was a kid, because my parents came from Holland, we would occasionally get mail from people in Holland because my mom and dad had relatives there and I remember sometimes my mom would send a letter to her friends and family in Holland. So, she would go and she would get a stamp and she would get a special stamp so the uh that so that it could go airmail uh and she would send a letter and I do remember that as a kid, it was always cool to receive a letter from people from Europe from another country. So, notice in there, I was using two phrases, right? You send a letter or you can receive a letter. Um we also say that you put a letter in the mail, okay? So, if someone said, um hey, I'll send you a birthday card. I'll put it in the mail or I'll put that card in the mail. So, you can say that you send it or that you put it in the mail. I do wanna say thank you to Neymar Vargas for becoming a member. Thank you so much, Neymar. Uh, for deciding to help support my channel. That's very awesome of you. Um so, I did use a couple of words in there. Um one is stamp or postage stamp. So, in order to send something in the mail, if you want to send a letter, you need to buy a postage stamp. We just say stamp and you need to put a stamp on the envelope. Uh so, that's one of the first things you need to do. Um and then you do need an envelope. So, Bear with me here because I say this word two ways. Sometimes I say envelope and sometimes I say envelope, okay? I'm not sure which is the American pronunciation and which is the British pronunciation but I could very well say to Jen, I'm gonna go buy some envelopes today or I could say I'm gonna go buy some envelopes today. So, (laughs) sorry about that. Sometimes in Canada, we have more than one way to pronounce something. So, Hey, I do want to just pause and say hi to everyone who is here. Um I do want to just take a moment uh to verify that things are working. Give me a sec here. Sounds like everything is working great. So, that is awesome. Um just let me click to where I'm supposed to be here. Um and I do want to say again uh a shout out to Brent from American English with this guy and just again, I noticed on Brent's channel at nine o'clock my time. So, when this live stream is done, he has a premiere of a video and that video has a special guest in it. So, if you have not checked out American English with this guy's channel, YouTube channel, you should uh and maybe go and watch that video as soon as we're done here because I think you'll enjoy it. Uh thank you to Prokhor uh Marchenko for becoming a member. Awesome. Thank you for uh deciding to join and support my channel. That is awesome of you, Prokhor. Thank you very, very much. So, yes, uh We only say stamp one way 
but we say envelope or envelope. Um, and I don't want to go into the third pronunciation because there is another one which has a different meaning. Um, at some point, they invented something called the telegram. Um, I'm not super familiar with the telegram um, but they invented the telegram and you could send a short message to someone using the a telegram. Um, so, a telegraph operator would send the message and the message itself is called a telegram. Um, let me just check one other thing here for a moment. Okay, there we go. Um, and they would send the telegram using Morse code. So, Morse code is when you send a series of dots and dashes and I think it sounds like this. Beep, 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 beep. That's my impression of Morse code but we have moved pretty far away from a lot of these types of things. I'm trying to go through the history of communication quickly because I think it's a little bit boring but you probably don't. You're probably enjoying this a lot. Let's see here. Um eventually too, they invented shortwave radio. So, shortwave radio allowed for wireless communication. So, people were able to communicate. Oh, we have a fly. We have a fly at the live stream. I have not had a fly in the live stream since I used to do these at school. So, I, maybe it's the same fly. Um the fly used to have a name but I can't remember uh what that name was. So, shortwave radio allowed people on one side of the Atlantic Ocean to begin communicate with communicating with people on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. Um and then eventually we had the telephone. To me, the telephone is the first type of communication that I remember in my life. As a child, I remember that we had a telephone. My mom and dad would make phone calls. So, when you use a telephone, you say you're going to make a phone call. Oh, I need to make a phone call today. Um you can also say that you're going to phone someone. Uh often in English, we take a noun and if it's a new item, we change it into a verb. So, in the case of the telephone, we did that. You could say, I need to telephone someone but we kind of shortened it and now we say, I need to phone someone or you can say, um did Joe phone today? Um and that's how you would say it. We also refer to the communication by phone as a phone call. So, you could say, I need to make a phone call or you could say, I need to phone someone. So, um and then just the word call as well, right? I need to call someone usually refers to using the phone. It's not like, hey, Joe. So, that's not what we mean when we say that we need to call someone. Uh we usually are talking about making a phone call. So, there's a couple different kinds of telephones. When your phone is this old-fashioned kind, we call it a landline. We call it a landline because the phone has a wire and that wire goes into the wall and eventually into the ground and sometimes you refer to a phone as being connected to the phone lines. So, a landline would simply not be a smartphone. A landline is connected to a wire. Actually, a few years ago in my part of Canada, many people started to get rid of their landlines because their smartphone replaced how they communicated when they needed to make a phone call. So, um they got rid of their landlines. We still have a landline and I also have my cell phone. Um let's see here. Um Khaled says, guys, is there any sound problem? And then Brent says, the sound is, the audio is perfect for me. I thought the audio was working really good. Yeah, it sounds pretty good to me, Khaled. So, hopefully, you can figure out what's happening there. Um and then, of course, we got these. So, this is what I would call a smartphone. We used to call it a cellular phone or a cell phone. We call it a mobile phone or a mobile phone depending on where you are um but this is now um probably the most common way to communicate and if you're wondering, I have a Pixel 3. I have a Google Pixel 3 is the type of phone I have. Um earlier, uh Rod asked about what has changed the world of communications the most or what method of communicating has changed things the most. I think the internet and then now the smartphone and those two together because the smartphone needs the internet have probably changed how we communicate with each other the most. Um if I'm at work and I need to get groceries, I will text Jen. This is how I text with my thumbs uh to ask if there's anything that I need. Um let's see here. 
Javier says, hi, Bob, could you please remove the mic from the screen? It looks like a dead mouse. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, but I do need it as close as I can have it to me. And uh, here, I'll show you what it looks like. So, this is what it looks like. Um, I guess I don't need the wind protector on right now, but I'm gonna leave it there. So, sorry, I, I want the audio to be really good. Um, we had fax machines for a while. In fact, at my school, we still have a fax machine. A fax machine is something where you put a piece of paper in and it scans the piece of paper and it sends it to another fax machine and a copy of it comes out. What we would call a facsimile. So, the English word facsimile means a copy of something. Um so, yes, a fax machine was quite popular for a while. Probably for almost 20 years. Um and you'll see again, we took the word fax and we turned it into a verb. So, I would fax something to someone. So, if someone needed a copy of something, I could say, oh, I'll fax it to you and I would take what I needed to send them, the piece of paper. I would punch in their fax number and I would stick it in the fax machine and it would go through and then I would basically say, yes, I faxed it to you earlier today or did you get the fax? I faxed it to you earlier today. So, that's just another example of how we name something and then we take the noun and we can sometimes create a verb out of it. We often do that with new technology. Um and then we have email. Uh email came along uh when I was young. I remember my first email address, how excited I was. I could email my friends. I was at university at the time and so, I could email my friends and they could email me back. Notice again, I got email. I got an email account. I got an email address and I was able to email my friends. So, that's how you would talk about, oh, can you send me an email? I did send you an email. I emailed you yesterday. So, notice how I'm flipping the word email in and out as a noun and a verb. Um let me just check one thing for a moment. I just wanna say hi to the 462 people. That's crazy. 462 people who are watching. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new here, don't forget there is a subscribe button right there. You should click it uh, and give me a thumbs up if this video is helping you learn a bit of English. Let's keep moving along though. Um We also text people. So, in some countries, you'll call this an SMS. Like, send me an SMS. In my part of Canada, we just call it texting. So, people will text each other. They will send each other a text or a text message. So, the other day, I sent a text to Dave the Canadian and Dave the Canadian texted me back, okay? Um I could say I sent him a text message and I could say he texted me back. Um but generally, we just use the word text. So, the other day, I texted Dave the Canadian and he texted me back. Later, I'm going to text Dave the text Dave the Canadian again. Um so, that's how we talk about that. Um we do sometimes say SMS but it's not as common. We just say text and most people um when they text, they use their thumbs but some people now use swipe on their keyboard. Um and now, something that wasn't as popular four or five months ago was fairly widespread in usage but now is very common because of COVID is the use of video calling, video calls or video chat. There's a number of ways to refer to it um but generally, what we've done is this. We have a piece of software called Skype and you can use Skype to talk with someone online and we've turned the word Skype also into a verb. So, later today, I'm going to Skype Rod VIP, okay? Sounds kind of funny but I'm going to have a Skype call with him and I can use it as a verb. We haven't done this with Zoom. Generally, with Zoom, we just say, oh, I'm gonna meet with someone via Zoom or I'm going to have a Zoom meeting with someone later today but Skype has become a verb and so has FaceTime. Like, oh, I'm gonna FaceTime my cousin later today or I'm going to FaceTime my mom on Sunday to see how she's doing. FaceTime again is another way to do a video call uh or to do video chat. So, let's see here. Um let's see here. I'm just gonna check the chat for a sec. A few things going on there. Uh and then just a few extra things that I want to make sure I talk about. Um none of this would be possible. We wouldn't be able to have a world where everyone can communicate easily without two things. Number one is satellites. So, a satellite is something that they put in orbit around the earth. 
If you are a really scientific person, it's ca usually called a geosynchronous orbit. That means the satellites in the same place in the sky all the time. Um I think that's what it means. <laughs> I'm not a science teacher. Um but satellites uh have been launched for years now, for decades. And when they put a satellite in space, it allows for communication to happen more easily between people in different countries. It also allows for things like television and internet to work as well. Um for sure. Um so satellites, I think Russia put the first satellite in space or the USSR. Uh I can't remember. Sputnik. Uh Natalie Natalia's here. Maybe Natalia knows her uh her history there. But uh satellites are a critical part of our worldwide communication and undersea cables. I did not realize this till I was researching it last night but there are hundreds of undersea cables, long wires or cables that go from one continent to another. If you look on Google and do a search for a map of undersea cables, there are so many cables between North America and Europe, between North America and uh Asia. Uh there are just lots of undersea cables in the world. So, it's just incredible to me that we have uh that much infrastructure um for communication. So, undersea cables, really, really cool. So, let's talk about nonverbal communication. So, you can communicate by speaking. You can communicate by writing but humans also communicate without using words and I'm just gonna go over a few of those methods in a moment. Um the first one would be body language. You can see this guy. You don't have to hear him to know that he is excited. So, he is expressing using body language. When you use body language, you communicate non-verbally how you're feeling. So, if I was like this, you might think I look skeptical. If I was like, you might think I look scared. I, I don't have a lot of good facial expressions. If I smile, you know that I'm happy. Um but I was sorry. I was trying to do body language. We'll get to facial expressions in a moment. Um but body language is when the way you stand or how you put your arms or what you do with your body communicates something. This can be a challenge because culturally different ways of standing and putting your body can mean different things to people. Uh so for instance in in my part of the world, if you stand like this with your arms folded, it can kind of mean that you're uptight. Like you can see my shoulders are up a little bit and my arms are folded. Whereas if I'm like this, I might look thoughtful. So, body language can communicate quite a bit. Um we also have facial expressions. So, if someone did something they shouldn't, I might go, oh, and you might see that I look surprised, right? Um I'm gonna try and look scared. If 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 Jen hid behind a tree at night and I walked by and she jumped out and said, boo, I might go, so I might look scared. Um I'm I can look angry. This is my angry face. <laughs> but facial expressions and now we can talk about smiling. Um facial expressions are nonverbal and they can communicate how you are feeling to someone. Um hopefully I didn't put a football picture up that made people fight in the chat. Um we also have hand gestures. So, you have good hand gestures. Um you can use hand just you can point. Now, pointing can be considered rude sometimes if you point at people. But if I said, um, can you bring me that cup of coffee? Um, or I'll have that. You can use your fingers to point. You can do thumbs up. Um, if you're at a rock concert, um, I forget. I think you do something like this, but I don't know if that's a good, uh, I think that was hidden behind the thing. You couldn't quite see it. I should point this way, shouldn't I? There, I point like that. Um, there is also, I'll show you, this is a really bad one. I'm not gonna show you what it is. But in uh, my part of the world, if you put your hand up like this and you raise just your middle finger, it means something really bad. It basically means you want the person just to get lost but in a really rude way. So, hand gestures are another way uh, of communicating. Um and there are many of them and sometimes they change over time. 
Um, but right now, thumbs up is familiar to most people in the world because we use this online. Like, hey, please give this video a thumbs up. I don't know why we don't say thumb up. So, that's a weird one. There's only one thumb but we say, hey, give this video a thumbs up or thumbs up, man. But there's only one thumb but you don't say thumb up. You wouldn't ever say, oh, I gave his video a thumb up. This doesn't sound right. You say, oh, I gave him a thumbs up. By the way, if you give me a thumbs up, that makes me happy. It's a facial expression. Also, you can subscribe. It makes you happy. Another facial expression. We also have touch. So, we communicate through touch. One of the ways we show love or affection for other people is we will give them a hug. Um and so, there are many different ways uh that you can communicate non-verbally. We have things like hugging, kissing, um handshakes. So, uh, a handshake is a non-verbal gesture of touch. That means that you agree. Um we're not sure what is going to happen with the handshake though because right now, handshakes are not good but usually, uh in a lot of business deals, you will end the deal with signing a contract and people will still shake hands. Often as well, for greeting people, you will shake hands like, oh, hello, how are you? And you will shake their hand. Um and even things like when you congratulate someone, you will often shake their hands. Uh and at moments when uh someone has a loved one who has passed away, you will often to console someone to make them feel better, you will give them a hug or you will shake their hand and give your condolences. So, uh definitely, we have a lot of ways that we communicate non-verbally through touch. Let me just see where I am here. Yes. So, we're gonna talk about a few other things related to conversation and communication. One is eye contact and this is very cultural as well. Uh in North America, it's considered polite when you talk to someone to look them in the eye. Um if you talk to someone like this the whole time, it's it's not rude but it is quite common like when I'm teaching in my classroom and if I say to a student, uh Joe, are you done your homework? I'm expecting Joe will look at me and make eye contact while he is responding. So, eye contact is a form of non-verbal communication that we use when communicating verbally and it's very important to make eye contact. You'll notice I make eye contact with the camera a lot. If I was to teach my lesson like this, if I was to say, okay, the next the next thing is face to face, um it gives you a different experience. When I look at the camera, it's easier to connect with what I'm saying. So, anyways, let we should move on to the next one though. Face to face. So, sometimes when you communicate with someone, you talk to them on the phone. Remember, this is my phone. You if I had a banana, I could use that as a phone. You talk to them on the phone but sometimes it's nice to actually meet face to face. When you meet face to face, it means you see the person and you are in the same place as them. So, I could say, hey, we're trying to make this business deal over the phone. It's not going well. Let's meet face to face. Can we have a meeting tomorrow? We'll meet face to face. Sometimes when you meet someone face to face, it's easier to read their body language and their facial expressions and so, you can build trust and understand them better. That's why I always recommend if you are learning English, you should meet with a tutor on Skype or FaceTime because you can see their facial expressions. Meeting with a native English speaker as a tutor in person face to face is even better. I think I just used my next word or phrase. When you meet someone in person, it means the same thing almost as face to face. I could say, it's nice to see all of you in the chat. It would be nice to meet some of you in person someday. For instance, I would like to meet Brent from American English with this guy in person someday. Um Brent and I have sent emails back and forth and we've shared little video clips but I have never met met Brent in person. So, it would be really nice when COVID's over and when I'm less busy, um Brent doesn't live that far away from me. It would be really nice to meet in person, have a coffee and just talk about what it's like to make videos on YouTube. So, sometimes you meet people in person. Sometimes though, you want to meet in private. So, let's say you're at work and you did something wrong and your boss is angry. Your boss might say to you, um 
I need to talk to you about something. Can you come to my office? I need to talk to you in private. What that means is one, you're probably in trouble <laughs> and two, whatever is going to be talked about is confidential, okay? So, sometimes you want to talk to someone. The opposite would be in public, okay? Sometimes you meet someone in public. Um you meet someone at a public place. If you're at a mall, you're in public. Um but sometimes people will want to talk to you in private. So, slightly different way of talking. Let me just check where I am here. Good. Um I'm gonna talk about a couple levels of communicating now. Um so, one way that you can talk whisper. I'm not sure you guys can hear me now. Um I'll go closer to the mic but sometimes say something quietly. Sometimes you just wanna say something quietly and so, you will whisper to someone. Um when you whisper, you speak in a really quiet voice like I just did uh and you do that so that other people can't hear what you say. You will often whisper in someone's ear. So, if Jen and I are sitting in a movie theater and the movie has started and I want to tell Jen something, I will lean over and I'll whisper in her ear. I'll say, did you turn, did you turn the oven off? <laughs> That's a a common thing that we think about after we cook a meal. Sometimes we forget to turn the oven off. So, it would be quite common for us to be at a movie theater uh to be half an hour into the movie and for Jen to whisper to me uh or me to whisper to Jen something like that like, did you remember to turn the oven off? No. Oh no, can you text one of the kids and tell them to turn the oven off? So, basically, that is whispering. Sorry, I was having some fun there. I don't know why that that was making me uh I was enjoying that. Um let me get to the next uh you can also yell, shout or raise your voice. I'm not going to do that here but if I was angry with someone, I would say, hey, stop running in the hallway, okay? I would probably yell louder than that. So, yelling at someone, shouting at someone or raising your voice are all very similar. Um in fact, sometimes when children yell or shout at their parents, the parent might say, hey, don't raise your voice to me. Speak calmly, okay? Don't raise your voice at me. Don't raise your voice. I think we would just say don't raise your voice. Um tricky. Sometimes the English speaker doesn't know <laughs> the right phrase. Um let me see here. And then we have you can scream. So, there's a number of different kinds of screaming. If you are scared or terrified, you might scream, okay? So, when you um Again, if Jen jumped out from behind a tree and said boo in the dark, I might scream like ah. Sorry, I don't scream very good. Um you can also scream. The best example I can think of is on a roller coaster. When the roller coaster starts to go down, people often scream not because they're scared. Some of them might be scared. Some are excited. So, there's a number of different kinds of screaming. Um Sometimes when people talk, they mumble a little bit and you can't understand what they're saying. So, that was an example. I'll do one again. Don't don't stop watching but So, if I talked like that, I wouldn't have a very successful YouTube channel if I mumbled all the time, okay? So, when you mumble, um it's when you don't speak clearly. Uh let's see here. Um in the chat, I see Nohaila Alui says, whisper in classroom between students. Yes, students often whisper to each other like, I can't believe Mr. Garrett. I can't believe he's wearing his shirt again. So, anyways, um let's go on to the next one. Sometimes people slur their words. Often people will slur their words um after they've had too much alcohol. So, they have trouble speaking clearly and they slur their words a little bit. Um so, um that's not something that you hear very often um but sometimes you will hear people slur their words. Let me see where I am here. The one thing you want to do is you want to speak clearly as much as possible. So, we have yelling and whispering and mumbling and people sometimes even stutter. That's when they have trouble saying the word. Um people slur their words, people mumble, uh people uh, stumble over their words. What you really want to do is you want to speak clearly. 
A few last things. First of all, there are other ways to communicate besides writing and speaking. One is singing. So, often when someone sings, the song is a kind of message and it's a way of communicating. Um I don't sing very well. <laughs> I can't sing on key. Um but another way to communicate could be through whistling. This is quite common when communicating with a dog. So, if I go like this, Oscar, come here. I'm glad I I was able to whistle. That basically, if I'm like, that whistle means that I want Oscar to come. He's not gonna come because he's outside right now. Um but you can also whistle a song like, hopefully, I don't get a copyright strike. I don't even know what song that was but (laughs) anyways, uh whistling is another way of communicating. My uncle, when I worked on a construction site, could whistle really loudly um and that would mean come here. Um I guess he thought I was a dog. No, he didn't but anyways. Um and then there is humming like (laughs) um I still don't know what song that is but anyways, you can hum and that is another way of communicating. I wanted to leave with uh two slides just for fun. One is one of the best things to do when you want to communicate clearly is to practice your pronunciation. Again, if you're an older uh person and you're over the age of 10, you are going to have an accent when you speak English but you do wanna work on pronouncing things as clearly as possible. So, you wanna work on your pronunciation. So, uh here is just a little slide to remind you of that. Um one good way to do it is to shadow people. And then uh this is the last slide just for fun. Um sometimes when you are somewhere like in a really big uh open space uh, or in a big building, If you yell, hello, 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 there is an echo. So, not directly related to communication but I found this picture while I was making this lesson and I thought it would be fun to put it here. So, 